found in Manitoba. We'll tell you about a love affair that began with a love for owls. The owls work their magic. We're on the move, we're on the go, we're on the road again. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the snowy woods here in southern Manitoba. Our first story tonight is about a young couple who share a love affair with owls. Now, they are dedicating a great part of their life to understanding these magnificent birds and to help find ways to preserve them for future generations. I think I saw it fly towards the pond. It's 26 below zero in Balmoral, Manitoba, but it's not nearly cold enough to keep Jim and Patsy Duncan indoors. That's a rabbit fine. The Duncans are biologists, two of the leading owl experts in the country. They've gone down over here somewhere. They've spotted a great horned owl hanging around in broad daylight, and they've gone to investigate. Oh, you just flew up. Yep, you just flew up. Can you see a, a band on it? No, no, there's definitely no bands. When you're out there walking through the woods and you see this big, magnificent owl, they're just so appealing. There's just a magnet there. Well, it sure is beautiful. Must be a female from the size. I it think part nice of the challenge is trying to understand to their world through their eyes. Well, it'd be really nice if it stayed to, to nest and figure out how they survive. It was all those questions and the mystery surrounding them that got me really interested in studying them. There he goes. There he goes. Do you think we go in and have a closer look? Yeah. Jim first became intrigued by owls as a student back home in Montreal. Ten years ago, he moved west to study Manitoba's magnificent great gray owls. This is Patsy. That's when he met Patsy, a young biologist fresh out of school who volunteered to help Jim with his field work. I thought, well, this sounds pretty interesting. I don't, I haven't had much experience with owls. He said, mm, okay, as long as she can climb trees, you know, she might work out. I thought I'll spend, I'll spend a few months or a few, maybe a year getting some experience and then I can go somewhere else and do something else. But then something magical happened and their plans changed. I saved the tallest tree for her to climb. And I sat back and I watched her climb up this tall tamarack tree. It must have been 40 feet, 45 feet high to the nest. And as she was climbing up, the golden tamarack needles were falling off the tree and covering her shoulders and hair. And I tell you, Wayne, it was... Uh, <laughs> what I a did it. story. It really it. was. Yeah. You were hooked. Yeah. <laughs> the owls worked their magic and uh, really showed us that we were for each other. So it was only fitting that Jim and Patsy's wedding featured a great gray owl as bird of owner. Right after the wedding, the owls came out and, uh, I guess, gave the final blessing. <laughs> All along, Cupid was at work. All along, because, boy, eight and a half years later, I haven't moved on. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still with the same fellow and still studying the same bird, so... And raising a family. And now raising a family. Do you know what kind of owl he is? Two-year-old Connor already shows a real eye for owls. Goopy. That's right. Well, I can remember when you were pregnant with uh, Connor. I used to hoot at your belly. <laughs> you hooted? At the belly, yeah, trying oh. to teach it all the different calls. <laughs> Poor kid. Yeah, was she? Studying owls is really part spy work and part detective work. Here's the feathers. Jim and Patsy move in to examine the scene of the crime. Mm -hmm. Looks like a sparrow of some mm -hmm. kind. And there's a pellet here, too. Must have coughed this up just before it started feeding on the uh, bird. We yeah, can, we'll can... take that back with us, too. Yeah. Lots of small bones in there. Owls have the wonderful habit of eating their prey whole. And when they finish digesting the good parts, they spit up this pellet. Well, here's a skull. And by carefully picking them apart, we can identify exactly what the owls are eating. Patsy and I have probably picked apart over 2,000 owl. pellets. She's probably the world's best owl pellet picker. <laughs> owl pellet? Picker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is he ever a pretty fellow? What's it? What do you call him? This is Ed. Ed. <laughs> Hi, Ed. How did you get him? Uh, Ed is a great horned owl, and he was hit by a car about 13 years ago. But unfortunately, 
he couldn't fly again. Look at the size of that beak. Yes. Well, Ed's what they call a raptor or a bird of prey, and he has a very strong beak to rip off, rip his food apart, and, and very strong feet to hold it. Does he ever take a peck at you? Whoops. Um, well, no. <laughs> don't move like that, Ed. Does he ever do that? I, I don't give him the opportunity to. No. <sighs> wow. Oh, easy, Ed. <laughs> All right. For most of the year, Ed does take it easy. But come owl banding season in late spring, he more than earns his keep. When the young great gray owls are just about to leave the nest, we put Ed near them. So we're going to line up these little chicks and try to entice the female. With Patsy them. usually stands close enough to Ed to protect them from the adult great gray owls, which come in to defend their young. Then we uh, catch the adult great gray owls, and then after we capture them, we weigh them, we measure them, put an aluminum band, a fish and uh, wildlife band on them. Every year we band owls to learn more about their basic biology, things like how long they live and where they move and, and when they move and how far. We're very close to banding the 1,000th great gray owl, which is probably more than any group of people have banded uh, in the world for that species. It's now early April, and hints of spring are everywhere. Owl banding season is still a month or so away, but before that can happen, it's time for the Duncan's annual owl survey. We um, spend a lot of our time out in the woods hooting. You can imitate the calls of the female. It's one way we find new locations of breeding owls. I think I heard a great gray to the east. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a male. This spring, there's a brand new owl caller along for the ride. She's two-week-old baby Brooke. Sounds like a little screech owl. Not doing too bad for a first owl survey. I think when you, you look at some of the folklore associated with owls, because some groups consider the owls to be good omens, you know, bringers of good news, the bearer of good news. And others consider the owl to be, you know, the bearers of bad news. You know, I heard the owl call my name. Or if you see an owl, it means bad things are going to happen to you. Although I think Patsy and I are living proof that good things can happen <laughs> to you too. When you're playing owls. <laughs> Let's go to the next stop. A lot of the fabrics that I use.